You're welcome, welcome. So this is a very, very essential sikha. First of all, it's, it's I think like one of the last, like second to the last sikhas that the Rav Trevor said before he had his stroke. And it's kind of a culmination. He's giving a summary of his, the way we can look at tragedies, at challenges, at tests, at uh, life in general, the creation, the whole world, our purpose and everything is all summarized here. And he's, he, he connects it to this week's Parsha, Kitisa, this week's Torah portion talks about uh, the whole length at length about Moshe Rabbeinu receiving the first of the Ten Commandments, the Sars of Devos, and then um, the Jewish people sinning, and then the the, the tshuva, the uh, return to Hashem that they did, and then uh, Moshe Rabbeinu making the second tablets, which were eternal and everlasting tablets. Now, the first tablet made by Hashem, welcome from uh, were made by Hashem himself, and uh, written by Hashem himself. So there were very high level of revelation. Um, somebody, somebody needs to mute. Ooh, yeah. Beautiful. I, I can mute you. Let me see. Welcome. Oops, sorry. Welcome, Leia. <laughs> welcome, Leia. No, it's good Good to hear you. Yeah. Your excitement. <laughs> so I'm just giving a quick uh, review of the Sikha till now. There's a few ladies who came who missed out. Um, this week's uh, teaching. So today we're going to finish it. Gavlalin, the Sicha, this amazing, amazing Sicha. So the review is like this. <clears throat> There's uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Rebbe gives a whole axiom and an order to things based on what the Rabbis say, that there's always a, a Rosh Toch Sof. There's a head, the body, and the end. Um, the Rebbe explains that there's a purpose, there's the actual activity, and then there's the results. Okay, so it's called Aleph Base Gimel. So this Aleph Base Gimel, one, two, three, right? Um, Rosh Toch Sof, um, which is purpose, intention, the actual activity, and then the result. This is something that the Rebbe is giving us a global wide view of everything that's going on in the world. Everything in Torah, everything in the world, everything that we experience, life, whatever we're going through, we need to see in the context of Rosh Toch Sof, Aleph Base Gimel. So if we're experiencing um, um, life as in this world, which is challenging, which is covered up, because that's the we're in the base, the middle section is the actual living in this world and trying to do Hashem's will and trying to fulfill purpose of creation, then that's that's we're in the crux of it, in the middle of it. We need to take a total picture, is what the Rebbe is giving us here, and see that we're in the middle of something. We're in a stage of a whole part of one entity. The one entity is is the Aleph base gimel, the the flow, and it's like people like to say it's the journey. Welcome, Karen. Yeah. So there's a journey uh, of the, of, that we are experiencing as a whole. It's not just you know it's the whole Jewish people. We as a whole also in our everyday life we have our journeys. Also we can take this axiom into that too. But right here they're just saying look at it. And from Hashem's perspective of even creation of the world, there was Hashem before creation, that within the purpose of creation and intention, then there was creation itself, and that's all what's going on in it. And then the result is going to be Geula Shleimah, the true and complete redemption. Same thing with Torah. Um, when Hashem gave the Torah, the Torah, there was a purpose and a reason, okay? There was an intention of why uh, even the world was created. So there's the Aleph is the intention, which is actually the Torah. The Torah is the intention of the world being created, and that's the Anochi, the Aleph of Anochi, Aleph of the first of the Ten Commandments. And then there's base, there is the Breshi Spiral of Hashem creating the world and everything that's in it, and everything that we need to do to fulfill the intention is in Torah, because a uh, world was created for Torah. And then Gimel is, we're going to see the results of the fulfillment of creation in the Gimel, the Geula Shleim, the true and complete redemption, everything will be fulfilled as Hashem's intention was to begin with. So right now we're in the base, we're in the making it all come together. And we have to always remember that, that we're part of a bigger, bigger picture of an Aleph base and Gimel. And it's all one, it's all one thing. It's all one process, it's all one journey. And, and the Rebbe makes a very, very strong statement, which is actually a little bit, it's, it's a, a big chiddush, that it's not just that we're going in this world as a descent in order to have an ascent. 
it's the descent is part of the ascent. And this is something that the Rebbe brings out in other sikhs also when he talks about the Khurban, the destruction of the base of Mikdash, and other places where he talks about um, the concept of, of concealment or destruction or loss, pain. All this is, the Rebbe doesn't see it as just, oh, it's a, it's a tragedy and it's terrible, but eventually something good will come about. If the Rebbe wants us to see it even more, no, this is part of the process of Geula, it's part of the re rebirth, it's part of the rebuilding. This is an essential part of, it's not a separate thing from Geula, it's within the context of the whole entire picture, this is part of the process. It's just a stage in the process of Geula. So it's all, because the intention is, right, is Geula. So this is just part of the process of Geula coming, okay? So it's it's a, a little bit of a more of a shift, of, um, of consciousness so that when we when we see when we experience something or we see something we see concerns in the world we see um you know things that we don't like to see that are against her against Hashem we need to remember that this is this is what, what we just said and there we took it also into the even further with the sin of the golden calf when the Jewish people sinned okay so it was a, as a descent right the Rebbe says, and he quotes from different um, places, that say that really the Jewish people were not supposed to, they weren't on the level of such a sin. They were higher level than that. But Hashem orchestrated it in such a way that they would sin in order to be able to give a possibility. It says, pen, opening of the mouth, like a, a way out for people to be able to do tshuva, bal tshuvas, to be able to have that ability, that possibility of doing tshuva in future generations. Meaning they set the they set the stage that there is the possibility that you can you can a person could God forbid sin err uh, fall descend and yet uh, be able to uh, do tshuva and return to Hashem in such a way that the connection is much much greater and there we goes a step further to say that the whole purpose of the descent the whole purpose of the sin the, and the reason it was orchestrated by Hashem that the person should be sinning is only in order to have a much greater stronger connection later on okay so the this this Hashem orchestrated all that they, they would be in the situation that they would fall the sin, sin in order so that the relationship could be strong and that's what the second tablets are first tablets were Hashem created it was too way beyond and above them that they it didn't last whereas the second tablets were after they did shuba after they were forgiven and in that situation, Moshe Rabbeinu was the one who actually made the tablets. With, uh, and th therefore, the it, they lasted forever. The second tablets are, are buried under the Temple Mount. They're in a, uh, they were hidden in temp under the Temple Mount, and they will be returned to us in the third temple. Let me just plug this in. I'm sorry. Um, and we will have them forever, for eternity. We they are eternal, and and. Meaning, what's the lesson and what's the deeper message over here is that whatever we're experiencing in, in life was ordained from above, meant from above. Whatever challenges we have, whatever difficulties we have, concealments, painful experiences, Hashem hiding, we don't see the, the rhyme or reason purpose. Hashem has the purpose and the purpose is, is that we will grow from it, connect from it in a much deeper, stronger way through tshuva, through reconnecting, and it will be from within us. It won't just be revelations from above, from Hashem. It will be us uh, connecting to Hashem in such a way that this bond and connection is eternal and strong forever and uh, more real, okay, everlasting. So that's the summary of what we've been doing till now. And we're going to hopefully finish this. Season. We are up to, Chavar uh, is not here, but we're up to tests, okay? Pashat Kitisa. Kitisa means to uplift. And it says, Kitisa Adrosh Bnei Israel, uplift the heads of the Jewish people. So, Rosh, the Rebbe says, is what we said before, Rosh Tok Sof, Aleph Beis Gimel, head, middle, end. So, Rosh Bnei Israel is the Rosh, the Aleph, the, the beginning of everything, all the Yenim. Shami Silvatar, if somebody needs to mute themselves, there's a little bit of background crackling. Um, so, this Rosh, the beginning of all everything, Shami Silvatar, for the Jewish people on the Torah, the, the whole world was created. I, before when I said the summer, I just said the Torah, but it's the Jewish people and the Torah, the whole world was created. 
בשביל התורה שנקראת ראשית או בשביל ישראל שנקראו ראשית, right? Remember we learned the sikha before, ראשית בר אלוקים, base ראשית, the whole, Hashem created the whole world for two things, for Torah and the Jewish people, that's the medrash, okay? And we're called ראשית, we're called the beginning, the Jewish people. ועל אחת כמה וכמה ראש בני ישראל, כפי שהראש נמצא במצב כתיסה, especially the head of the Jewish people in an uplifted state. So ראש, כי תיסה is a very uplifted state. ובפרטיות נכללים בזה גוף הבית העניינים האחרים, שכן בראש ועל נכללים גם הבית והגימל, האמצע והסוף. So ever says very important, remember this axiom, in the Aleph is included the base and Gimel. In the base is included also the Aleph and the Gimel, Gimel includes Aleph and base, meaning it's all included in everything, so the Aleph includes everything. So what's included in the Aleph? Also the Yerida, the descent. However, the Kudim Ve'aliyah and coming up afterwards, L'chapel Nafshotechem, to atone for us, meaning they, they um, counted the people who were left after they sinned from the ego, they had to count them, that was, that's what happened in um, counting with the Jewish people after the sin, and then from that came the ascent to uh, atone for the sins, and they for us giving something to atone for the sins, they gave, I guess, the, I think it was the Mechot Tisa Shekel, was, um, is what he's talking about. Um, Okay, there's footnotes, but I'm, I'm going to skip uh, uh, the, uh, the footnote because um, I want to finish the sikha today. Okay. Um, mm -mm, base. So that was Aleph. Aleph includes really the base and Gimel, but it's a high state of uplifting um, the Jewish people, and they counted the Jewish people, and it includes in it the, um, the tshuva and the atonement through the... Um, the the, this process of the counting also. Now, the next part of the parsha is about the um, creation of the ego, making the ego, the golden calf, breaking the tablets. That's the middle, right? We said before, that's the descent. And, okay, so the Aleph is the head of the Jewish people, the Aleph, the Rosh Bnei base is the part, of, the second part of the parsha talks about the sin of the golden calf. Breaking the tablets, the game of the end of the parsha talks about the last tablets. Till the end of the parsha, when Moshe Rabbeinu comes down with the second tablets, and his face is shining, and the Jewish people saw his face so shining, they were afraid to approach him. That's what it says in the sixth parsha. So this is similar to what at the end of the five books of Moses, at the very, very end of the whole Torah, it, it's the end of Torah ends with um, that Moshe revealed to them everything and all the miracles and all the, and he, right, he recounted all the miracles that were done for them. And the kolamora gadol, and for the things that they, the, uh, the wondrous, but awesome, awesome in a way of like, you know, like more as more trepidation awesome. It's like, wow. But more of a wow, of like it's it's like it's it's way beyond, but it's like um more as it has a little tinge of of um of gavura in it. But he, the, the end and then is that he's revealing to them all the wondrous things that they, that Moshe did to the Jewish people. Aside from all the wonders that's spoken about in this week's parsha, all the wonders, uh, oh, oh, in that week's parsha, in the end of the Torah, it talks about many wonders, but at the very, very end, it, it says, like it culminates everything with all the wonders and all the miracles and all the great, like awesome things that, like, like the word, that, like sh things that will make you shake, right? And that Moshe did to the old Jewish people. So the, but meaning the, the culmination of it is also, there's a culmination here in this week's Torah portion, the head, middle, and end, um, where, because the end of this week's Parsha talks about the second Luchos being given. And then he says it's similar to the end of the five books of Moshe of Torah, that also there's a culmination of all the miraculous things and awesome things that Hashem did to the Jewish people. So these three, these three stages are also alluded to in the three 
um, regalim, the three um, holidays, uh, Pesach, Sukkot, and Shavuos. So Pesach, Harishon, Pesach's the first, Aleph, Kashul the Chodesh Aviv, it's connected to the month of the spring, and we're getting, Pesach is in about seven weeks, I think, okay, it's not far, maybe less, yeah, seven weeks, I think, from uh, is the first of the three regalim, Kashul the Chodesh Aviv, it's connected to the month of the spring. Okay, so Aviv starts with Aleph. Okay, so it's in the spring starts with Aleph. Gilu in the Malamata Pesach. We know it's a revelation from above to below. Hashem shows us miracles, right? He's made miracles to take us out of Egypt. It's above to below. Shatvam is bokel to bishula. And um, then we have, and it symbolizes also the time of the year where where the the tua the the fields. You know the the wheat and the barley; they are be, um, becoming ready on their own. Okay, Chag Shavuot, Chag Shavuos, Hashanah Leglim, which is the second to the the holidays. Kashuli Bekuik Tzichitim is connected to the actual cutting of the wheat. That's the Avodat Adam. That's the work of man below to actually actually have to harvest the wheat. Uh, from, so it's alluding to the work of man from below to above. The Chag Asif, which is Sukkot, the, 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 the next holiday, it's called the, the holiday of gathering, which is where you actually bring the, the, the wheat into the home. It's, it's the third one. It's connected to gathering, gathering and harvesting and the wholeness of all the work that was done throughout the year. The completion of all our work really is in the true and complete redemption. When we will all be gathering, all the Jewish people will gather together, like it says, I will gather all the Jewish people, says Hashem, and that's written in Yirmiyahu. Not only will the Jewish people gather, but all the sparks of holiness will be gathered from the entire world. So this is the end of paragraph nine, and you can ask questions or make a comment, and I'll say hello to whoever else came in the meantime. Karen, hello. Let me see who else. Welcome. Yes. So I think I welcomed everybody. Yes, welcome. Uma. Does anybody have a question or a comment? We are up to you. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Alpi and his Kalel Yvan Gankin, the Hidush, the Kone Hod Moshe. So now that he was explained more, the Hidush, what was happening with Moshe Rabbeinu's shining. Why did he get this shining? Remember the question? After the, the sin. And uh, when you know, and with the second luchos, it seems like Moshe Rabbeinu's revelation and his, the shining of his face should have happened in the when they were on a higher level at the beginning when Hashem gave the tablets and Hashem um, initiated the giving of the Torah. It was much higher level of revelation. Why did his face shine only after the second tablets were, which were actually created by Moshe, and after the Jewish people sinned? So he's saying like this. So what's the chiddush of these Moshe Rabbeinu having these radi this radiance, Karnei Hod, it's a radiation uh, that happened after the final Luchos. This is similar to the uh, awesomeness, the evil, the elevation, what's going, ha what's happening when you have the Gimel, the third stage. That only comes specifically after we do the Avodah, the service of the middle service of Beit. Which is the sin of the golden calf and the shviat al breaking of the luchos. The Rebbe doesn't even say the tshuva over here. He just mentions the, the avoid of the sin of the golden calf and the breaking of the tablets. I guess the breaking of the tablets was the tshuva. Okay, so I, I would like to read into this a little bit. The Rebbe doesn't even say that with the tshuva. He just mentions breaking of tablets. So breaking of tablets must mean, according to this, that the breaking of the tablets is the service of tshuva. Okay, breaking of the tablets mean we're broken. We're we're we realize we, we what we did was needs to be broken. Okay, Davka halachot not specifically. It's the final tablets shabali that came after the descent down below the fall of the boom in order to to correct and fix the world. This is done. The boom, the fixing of the world, is done through the second luchos. 
not the first one. Ho'alim et ha'gilui, okay, so these final tablets, which are, we're able to do them to fix the world, they are the ones that ho'al et ha'gilui, they, they uh, enact the gilui, the revelation of talumot chokma kiflaim l'tashiyah, the hidden, the hidden secrets of an understanding of chokma are kiflaim l'tashiyah, they are, give a double portion of tushia, which is help, double measure of help from above, or double measure of uh, uh, Tushia of better and betterment. Uh, let me just see the footnote. The footnote of Kiflai and Tushia. Sometimes the Rebbe would give people a second dollar when they came for dollars, and uh, he would say Kiflai and Tushia. I'm pretty sure a double measure of blessing. And that's Kiflai and Tushia is from Eob, it's from Job. I looked at footnote 75. Okay, so this idea of the Rebbe is very, very important because the brokenness, right, the teshuva process, the falling, the descent, that is what brings the double portion, the double measure of uh, what we need, what we'll get in geula, shleima, or when we do teshuva. Okay? Very, very important. So, and it's specifically through these second tablets that we can actually fix the world and do the avoider in the world and do the biru and elevate all the sparks and bring this uh, revelation of the hidden secrets of Chokma and Kiflaim Latushia, a double portion of, um, of, of strength. Tushia is also strength. So it's a double portion of strength. That's interesting. I just remembering that we had a whole Sikha, we learned about this concept of, of strength, of double strength, right? When the Rebbe spoke about the destruction of the Beis Amikta, she talked about, right, the barzo, the, the metal, the iron that's double, double is the strongest right and that's what we'll be able to have in the base of mikdash we'll be able to have iron remember because we will have this the descent and the the connection to hashem will be so much greater in the third temple because we did, of all the work that we did during galos we'll be able to have barzel iron which is stronger which alludes to a stronger connection in the third base of mikdash we'll have this barzel this um okay iron or steel or whatever um i keep uh um yeah <laughs> we, we we discussed that is it iron or steel cover up will have to uh, remind me okay in any event it says in the Torah, this is we're talking about the what are we going to have in 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 completion the pnimius for asmi sachokma, the inner dimension and the essence of wisdom, of chokma, talamos chokma is what the pasuk says. The malami chokma aglia. This is beyond the revealed chokma, the luchot arishonot, which were given to us by Hashem in the first tablets. Shalchenik v'sef v'alei days of Moshe Rabbeinu. That's why it was added to Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was the one who added this ability, right, to us to have this double measure of chokma, this hidden. Secrets, Talmud was the hidden pnimius, atmius, the inner dimensions of Torah, and he was the one who received the, the second Lukos, Karno Panav, and therefore his his face shone. Al de Chokmat Adam Te'il Panav, similar to the verse that says, it says it in Kohelis, and it talks about in the Gemara, the wisdom of a person makes his face shine. Okay, right? You know how it is that sometimes you could see a, a picture of a person. I'm working on Shaduchim for my son. So for me, it's important to see a picture because I could sometimes see from the picture a little bit, you know, you don't judge only by a picture, but you can see if there's like some wisdom coming out, <laughs> some radiance, some sort of illumination, some sort of um, an aura. If a person has this, this wisdom, you could see it through the expression of the eyes and the face, this, if the face is shining or not. And it's interesting, my son likes the girl who's smiling. <laughs> I think most people do, but it's important to him. The, the shining of the face comes from Chachma, from wisdom, okay? And it's expressed on the face. So Moshe Rabbeinu had it this on this extreme level of his face was shining, this great aura that, to the point that Jewish people were afraid to even approach him. And this is a light that he had which is an essential essence light that was beyond even 
um, being able to really, really come and be present in the face in a way that it would was able to be viewed normally. It was so high that it was just like emanating and it was beyond what it could even come into his expression. And uh, yeah, it was a very high level light. Oh, ask me an essential light that was beyond being something that could come into his, actually his love should be revealed in his, in his, in himself without it, you know, I guess illuminating so much on the outside. And um, therefore, since the advantage of the second tablets came, the last tablets finally came, Dafka specifically through this descent. And Hashem um, bringing, bringing something down here below, Islapshus, bringing revelation down below through our work in this world, have based. This is the second level, second stage of our work in the world. And Moshe Rabbeinu had to actually carve Salacha from stone in the world, from worldly things, physical something, he had to actually carve these, these stones. Not like the first tablets where Hashem created them, so they weren't made out of stone. They were God, godly creations. They were a whole different creation, I guess. Not something from the physical world. Until we transform also the unwanted things. So that's our that We can take something undesirable, unwanted, unholy, and we can transform it. Therefore, this shining of his, the, his skin and his face, created a situation they were afraid to come approach him. Therefore, Hashem had to put a masve, like a guard, a shield, over his face, to hide this light. And what he's saying, it had to conceal, and it concealed, it concealed um, uh, okay, Bechdel Astir Gilu Elokut Shabbatah Meha Yitlapshut Be'inyan Habeloin. Okay, I'm not going to translate this because uh, I'll, I'll translate it word for word, but I, I'm afraid to explain it because it says you have to look here in Hanshak Tafesh Ein Beis, and I haven't looked it up, so I don't want to take responsibility. But let's see, there's another, there's 119, a footnote here. Yeah, it's just giving um, all kinds of places to look up more about this shield and this cover up, this masve, this uh, like a, a cover over his face so that they wouldn't see this light shining out. Um, so it was, it was, it was covering a gilu elokus, a revelation of godliness in the Torah um, from being um, Uh, and cloaked in the room. So what exactly that was not explaining, he's just saying, look here, look there, look there. So I didn't look in these places. But he does continue. This concealment of this guarding, this masve, this guard, So it's not, this guarding was not from the essence of the Jewish people. The essence of the Jewish people are known. They don't need a guarding because the Jewish people it says they saw Hashem panim panim face to face when the like it says Moshe Rabbeinu says Hashem spoke to you face to face in the when Torah was given. Bliyas del klal without a, any covering. V'lachen kasher Moshe bibel bnei Yisrael et Hashem yitzuve uisir tamesve. V'ahu bnei Yisrael pnei Moshe ki kano pnei Moshe. That's why when Hashem when Moshe Rabbeinu was explaining what Hashem is commanding, he would remove this guard, and the Jewish people could see his face. They could see that it was shining. So when he was speaking the words of Hashem, he was able to un uh, uncover himself, reveal his, his shining, because the Jewish people are on a level that they could see. They, they themselves saw Hashem face to face in Mount Tara. They saw a high level of revelation. So they were able, from their essence, to, to, tell, to see it. It's only when they're dealing with worldly things, Moshe Rabbeinu and the Jewish people, in order to be able to fix the world and elevate the world in a way of being engulfed and engrossed, right, and in, 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 in clothed in the world, dealing with the world, then Moshe Rabbeinu would put back the guard in order for the world to be able to receive this revelation. Not to be completely nullified from its existence. Meaning, the masveh, the cover-up, 
What's the intention of the cover up? Not to hide Hashem, but just to have the revelation of Hashem in a way that they could receive it. Okay, and this is something Hasidus talks about a lot. This whole way Hashem created the world is not just to hide Hashem because Hashem wants to be hidden. The whole point is just to hide what's necessary for us to be able to deal with the world and be in the world. And, and right? Because if, you know, imagine, you know, when the Jewish people are by Mantara, for instance, I'm just giving my own little example, and they're seeing Hashem and they're hearing, you know, and there's all this revelation of the Mount Sinai, they couldn't go ahead and do their shopping, you know, for their groceries and, and you know, cook at that point and do their budgeting. Okay. <laughs> so that was, Right, it was such a great revelation. It was they could handle it, but they weren't necessarily able to be dealing with the world. So Hashem ha had to cover up what was necessary, right, from great revelation, in order for the Jewish people to be able to handle and elevate this world. But it's not just to cover. It's the goal is not just to cover up Hashem. The goal is just to cover up what is necessary for the Jewish people to be able to elevate this world, deal with the world, and elevate it. Okay, I hope that's clear. <laughs> that was a good example. Okay. Um, so now, by the way, if you want an, a, an example of how we're really, we get revelations, we're able to sometimes put on, you know, Sikha of the Rebbe or, you know, good inspiring music or something of a high revelation, high revelation, and at the same time be cooking and, and doing our work, okay? <laughs> it's possible. So we can do both simultaneously. So we're like we're at that level where we can have a they have a speaking to us and we're doing our our mundane work. Okay. We're already in that level of being able to integrate the two to some degree. Okay. That's from that's the kavana, that's the intent. The whole point is, the Rebbe says, is that through our service in fixing the world and elevating and transforming the world, Zikuch is, is, is to purify, make it holy. A Jew is activating that, that also a Jew, as he is in this physical world, he can receive this revelation of seeing this aura, this eminence of his, the face of Moshe Rabbeinu's face shining. Kifishiyeh, as it will be, bishlemut, holy, begula, mitifashlimah, the true and complete redemption. Then for sure, we won't, we'll be able to deal with physical and the highest levels of revelation simultaneously, okay? Um, like it says, this, uh, Hashem, uh, our, our, our teacher, which was referring to Hashem, will not be hidden anymore. And our eyes will be able to see our teacher, meaning we'll be able to see Hashem with our physical eyes. Jewish people, even as they are dealing with the world. Until this will be also in the world itself. Hashem will be revealed, His glory will be revealed, and all people will see, all flesh will see, flesh will see together. Even Mikhail Tizak, the stones we'll see and be, be screaming to us in the walls, right? They'll be able to, the, the flesh and the stones and the physical will be able to see this revelation of Hashem's power of creator in, within creation, being created now at every moment from nothing to something that I'm adding this. This is something also, this is not the first time that ever says this. That ever says we need to meditate and think about how Hashem is creating everything from nothing to something. And that needs to be on our uh, forefront of our consciousness. Okay, so that's a, a good meditation to try to do at all times. Hashem is creating now the world from nothing to something, because this is the revelations of the Geula Shlema of Hashem within creation. I finished, we finished Yud. So any questions or any comments? We're at the Almost five or so a few more pages. What I was just thinking that um that the shining light of Moshe Rabbeinu mm -hmm. is <laughs> that we are so connected with the Moshe Rabbeinu that that our connection with him and his connection with us is so intrinsic that you know the whole Indian of the Balachuva where a Balach a tzadi can't reach the level of a Balachuva, but here the Yidin were on the level of Balachuva. So he gained 
as we gained from him, he gained from us. Like we were Balachuvas and he could have this great revelation because the level of Balachuva was was revealed into the world. Like it seems mm. like he was also like the Rebbe said, this itself was part of the process. The, it's it's all part of that process. So the Indian of of elevation for him also was the Indian of, of Balachuva. He that shining light was a gift also. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe, maybe he'll say this in the uh, the later part of the sicha. I'm not, you probably learned the sicha before, and <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It just came to me as we were That's learning tough. and thinking how we're so, ele- you know, we're so connected to the Rebbe and the Rebbe to us that that our tshuva is also elevating the tzaddik. I, I don't know. It was just a thought. It's, it's probably going to come up. <laughs> That's my hunch. Something is going gonna, gonna to come through the Rebbe. Let's see. Let's see. All right. um, welcome, 770, whoever you are. Um, if you want, you can at some point introduce yourself if you'd like. You don't have to. Okay. Yud. Oh, did we just finish Yud? No, we just finished Yud. Okay, so we're up to you, Aleph. <clears throat> Should I review Yud again? Just so we, I mean, this was a pretty awesome thought. <laughs> I think it's going to help me, this idea. Um, hopefully it'll help all of us. This shining of the face of Moshe Rabbeinu, okay? And there are the saying, it, it, pretty awesome things here, that it was like, again, he's reviewing what we said before, that it was specifically through the sin and and the breaking of the luchos, which the, the Rebbe doesn't even say over here, the Avay Chuba, which means to me that the breaking of the luchos means the breaking of the luchos was already the chuba, okay? The being this brokenness was our chuba, and so specifically through making right us making and initiating Moshe Rabbeinu creating the second luchos from the physical stones of this world, which represents not. That the, the, the fixing of this world. So it's us being able to be in the world, okay, be doing our work, whatever it is, dealing with all the, the darkness, dealing with all the pain, and we should not have any pain, but all the concealments, all the things where we don't see Hashem, specifically dealing with them and elevating them, right? Purifying the world, elevating the world, making it holy, dealing with physical things and using them for holiness, elevating them, seeing their purpose, one thing at a, at a time, but one thing, more thing, more things, more things, dealing with physical, physical things, making them holy. That is creating the possibility of completely seeing Hashem, the revelations of beyond, right? Beyond, beyond, within the physical. And that's going to bring the possibility of, like we said, that Hashem will be revealed, the glory of Hashem in our flesh, called Basar, or our flesh, every flesh will see Hashem. The stones will see Hashem, right? This is the revelation of Hashem, it's called Hashem, the creator within creation. But we do that by us seeing Hashem in all the physical things that we're dealing with and using it for its ultimate purpose. And the only way we can really, really do it is by really learning Hasidus. Because Hasidus like, helps us to understand and see Hashem in everything. Okay? That's, we're very lucky. So that that the goal is to be able to be able to see the emanation, these revelations of Karan or Panag of Moshe Rabbeinu's face shining, and still be doing dealing with our mundane physical things. Not like what it was in the time of the Midbar, where it was so intense, even though they were on a level they could see intense godliness, but they couldn't see intense godliness and at the same time do their work in the physical. But they're ever saying through our work, through, through f- fixing and dealing with the world, we are bringing about the possibility to, yes, be able to you know, hear the greatest revelations of the Rebbe while we're cleaning, <laughs> okay? Be able to, you know, do, deal with all the, all the aspects of this world and see Hashem in everything, okay? And ultimately, completely in the true and complete redemption. Okay, so you're Aleph. Megimel, you need from these three things. We have a lesson for a service of a human uh, it doesn't even say the service of a Jew, service of a, a Adam, man. We call us men at all times. Like we said before, every parsha we only read once a year. 
except for the Shemini, we read a few times, but basically every Parsha you read once. Yeshno Mizeh, and there's, each Parsha has its lesson for the for the entire year, not just, but and it has a specific, its own unique lesson. So Yeshno Mizeh, Limud Kolokol there's something we need to learn from this Parsha for the entire year. Especially when we're in the Parsha of Kitisa, and we have to learn from it something special from the unique from this parsha. What are we learning? This is a summary. This is what we're taking from this sicha and from this parsha, that a Jew ha is given the power to pull, to apply, to create. All aspects of inanim, everything. From beginning to the end. Everything in between. From Aleph until Taf. Okay? Which is amazing because Aleph is the revelation from above. But the Rebbe is saying we can create and bring about all these revelations, the revelation from above, the work and below, and the Geula revelations. Aleph Atah, Bechlalut, in general. Kepish Nechlakim Begimel Ratziyot Oishonav, as they're divided to, into Aleph Eskim. Kepish Oishonav, the Kol Gimel Yenim 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 So now the Rebbe is applying it to each and every day. Not just in general in our lifetime, each and every day. How? <clears throat> Immediately when you wake up in the morning, we become a new creation. We say, Hashem, thank you, Hashem. Right? We acknowledge Hashem. You've given me back my neshama. So what's the Aleph of the, the uh, in, in the day? So the first level of our service to Hashem is on the level of Aleph. Where we have this bittel, it's the foundation and the beginning of our day. We acknowledge we're bittel to Hashem with the modani. Then, okay. So he's saying also something. Take this to heart. This is a, a wonderful, beautiful thing. All, the, our whole entire existence, our Aleph of Ani, I. Ani is I, it starts with Aleph. So our Ani, our Aleph, is Mode Ani Lefanecha. I am thanking you, Hashem. So our whole existence of a Jew is that we're thanking Hashem, acknowledging Hashem. Shaken Ani Shal Yudi, because our Ani, our existence, our uh, how we are of a Jew, as we are Lemata, so we are down here below. We're one with Hashem's Anochi above. So the Rebbe is saying something very, very profound. It's not just our Neshama above that doesn't come into the body that's connected to Hashem. Even the Ani, the me of a Jew, as it is down here below in the body, is one with Hashem, with Anochi above. Yes, it says, the Jewish people and Hashem are one. Like it's alluded to in the shape of the Aleph. There's a yud, a yud in the matha, the yud, a kadosh bochu, the mala, the kama machabam, there's a yud of a Jew as he is down below. And then there's a yud of Hashem, uh, represents Hashem above, and the vav that connects the two. That's the olive. It has a vav and the yud and the yud above and below. Okay, dosh, pshitut shal yudi, hidabar chadim pshitut atzmut. Like we know, the simplicity of a Jew, the pshitus, when you go, this, go down to the Jew's essence, he is one with the simplicity, the essence of Hashem's essence. This essential connection is expressed and revealed when we say modani, which is which is this acknowledgement of Hashem, which is beyond just acknowledging Hashem, beyond anything that comes in the forms of names, acknowledging you, Hashem, Hashem is in His essence. And it's us, Acknowledging and our essence is acknowledging Hashem's essence. So, therefore, the Rebbe says it's the Jewish custom of all Jews, even small children, right? Because their essence connects with Hashem too. We all say Modani. It is more than this. Even the, 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 the word Mode is Tafel and Batel to the Aleph of Ani. It's secondary to the word, the Aleph of the Ani, because we first say Mode Ani. Shaken, Aikal, Kanifra, Hutivat, Ani, because the main thing is the Ani, the I. 
‫מיד כשנה ושנתו ישנה לכל ראש ‫עם צאתו של אדם עם המחר ועם ראשת רגדים, ‫ורק לאחרי זה הוא האני עושה הפעולה, ‫החל מהמאה והפעולה דמודה לפניך. ‫only after this, only after you have this acknowledgement, Okay, I'm sorry, let me backtrack. I didn't translate the whole thing. Um, the main thing is that I need, because when immediately a person wakes up from, from his sleep, first his, there's existence of the person with all his limbs and his sinews, and only after that, he's, it, 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 the ani is doing something. First you wake up, you just exist, then you do something. So, and starting with saying modeani. <laughs> כי עד כדי כך שאני של יהודי קשור עם הקדוש ברוך הוא, שגם שבזמן קודמת מציאות האני, אף על פי כן האני הוא תקף במצב שהודעה לפניך. What he's saying, what he's saying, is that the Jew is so one with Hashem, and so acknowledging and bitter to Hashem, that even before we say I, we're saying what the Ani, מוידה, I'm thinking, acknowledging, because our whole existence is an acknowledgement of Hashem. So that's, right? That's why we say mode and then ani, because our all ani is one with mode, with thanking, acknowledging Hashem. And afterwards we say the blessings and the prayers, and we go to the base Knesha, to the base Medrash to learn, and that's the general, the Aleph of our avoda, our service of Hashem throughout the day. So that's Aleph. We start with the mode ani, and then go on to the davening learning, that how we start the day with Aleph, with acknowledgement and, and the prayers and blessings and learning. Then, comes the action of base in our service, a daily service, which is the person goes out to work. We go out of this holy state, or the holy, he doesn't say holy state, sorry. We go out into the world. Okay. It doesn't say we go out of the holy state. We just go out into the world. To do our service throughout the day. We go according to the minhag, the custom of the world. That's Remember, there was a whole sikha we learned also. And it talks about going according to the ways of the world, which, which is an expression of We also, it's expressing and dealing with the physical world. And the, the ideas and the needs of the world, but often in a way that we're dealing with masama tabayuna. We're dealing in a in um in the customs of the world, but we're doing it faithfully and with um, honesty. Okay, but we're dealing with the world as we know it, as it it's expected in the parameters of the world. But you know, with our mitzvahs and with um, honesty. Now, Gimel, afterwards, at the end of the day, we finish, we have the wholeness of this whole service of the day. And what do we do at the end of the day? We make an accounting and a summary of everything, the calling in of everything that we did during the day, all the deeds of the day. In general, uh, the person, I guess, men do this when they pray married, Avit. Add the siman until the finishing of Achtzadikim Yehuda Lishmecha. The whole righteous people will thank Hashem. Hodal Hashem, we acknowledge Hashem. Yehuda Lishmecha. We say this at the end of our interesting. We've been doing this now for a few weeks. Quite um, the Achtzadikim Yehuda Lishmecha is very much at the end of our learning every day. Okay, um, which the Rebbe saying is is we do basically at the end of the day. Uh, also, we do this at the end of our learning in the morning, but there it says it, when they daven mar, they sing this at the end of the davening. It's a combination of the days. Yodu lishmecha means ach tzadikim, tzadikim yodu lishmecha will thank you, Hashem. Okay, so this is acknowledgement, thankful, gratefulness, gratitude to Hashem, similar to the madani in the morning. So I'm very happy I read this because I don't know why I started saying ach tzadikim at the end of the, the, the morning, but our uh, daven, our learning every day. Now we know why. We finish with an acknowledgement. In the end of the whole completion of our service. Until we say, So at the end of the day, we we finish our service by saying also the Kriyashma and we're giving over ourselves completely to Hashem. When we say, In your hand, Hashem, I am putting my soul, my spirit, my soul, my Ruach. I'm... I'm like um, 
like putting as a pikadon, like I'm, I'm gifting it, or you know, I'm a kid. I'm depositing it. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to translate as kid. It's more than just giving. It's like and trust. What and trusting? What and trust. And, and trusting you. Yeah, I, 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 it could be. Yes, I'm trusting you. It's more than just I'm giving you. Um, yeah, right. It's a pikadon because like you put somebody to give back afterwards. So you're entrusting. And turning them. over like temporarily. Yeah, yeah. But okay, similar to this, we have all these three Aleph Beis Gimel in general and everything that a Jewish does throughout his entire life. Should be long, good life. The beginning of our service is there is, and then there's the middle of the service, and then there's wholeness of our souls. Especially in our generation. Last generation of God's first generation of Geula, the After we've done all our service and our work of all the entire Jewish people coming from the past generations and years, we've finished now already all the final elevations, right? Elevations, ruin, um, things that need to be. Um, Navura clarified. That now the emphasis is first of all to finish and completely wholly finish all the work that we've been doing till now. To finish it, to finalize it in order to bring the Gimel, the third stage, which is the third redemption, third Geula in actuality, Mamish, right? In Pearl. Physically in this world revealed. Okay, so that's your Aleph going on to your base. Where do we get the strength to do this? It was interesting. There was a video that we should, we saw at the JLI. I'm teaching JLI on Sundays, by the way. If anybody still hasn't registered, this week is on family. Next week is on health, and there's mental health. It's very very good. Um, so one of the videos was. Somebody came to the Rebbe and said, should I retire? And the Rebbe said, no. And then the man said, where will I have the Kaya to continue? <laughs> so the Rebbe says, Kaya is from Hashem. <laughs> Simple. Okay, so where do we have the Kaya that each and every Jewish person can do everything they need to do from beginning to end, starting from the first Aleph of Ani in the morning of each and every Jewish person also being connected. So where, where do we get the Kaya? First of all, no, uh, we no. It comes from our Aleph of Ani, I, which is connected to the Anochi of Hashem. Okay, so each and every Jewish person kashu who is connected, tied with the Anochi Lamala, with Hashem's uh, uh, essence above. Until even a Jew, when we're down here below dealing with the world, as I call we need to know the whole world was created for the Jewish people that are called the Ashit, we're called the beginning. We're the beginning, we're the heads of the entire creation. Okay, so everything that's happening in the world is for us. Okay, everything is created for us to do our fulfill our purpose. We need to say with the power that we have to do this to reveal it. Okay, we all have the power. That's the first, the paragraph that we just read. But how do we reveal this power? Is in each and every Jewish person. Come, that we have it comes to Moshe Rabbeinu. Like we have this, we have the the power of Moshe. Moshe's soul is in every generation, like it says in the Zohar. In this generation, it's Moshe Rabbeinu comes through the previous Rabbi. The Rabbi says, of course, we know it's the Rabbi. Through him, through the Rabbi. So for us, it's you know the Rabbi. All these things are nifalim, are activated, are come to fruition, uh, come to action. All these three levels of the first tablets, the breaking of the tablets, and the last tablets being made, and together with the shining of the face of uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, okay, the, the, the glory. The Rebbe says, this all happens to us, through us. All these things through us being connected to Moshe Rabbeinu, 
to the other. ועל אחת כמה וכמה כשנמצאים בשבת שבה מקוראים את הפרשה כי טיסה את ראש בני ישראל, especially when we're in this פרשה of כי טיסה, טיסה אז משה רבינו זה אלווייטינג, שנוסף לכך שבני ישראל הם ראש בכלל נעשה גם בכוחו של משה רבינו, הנשיאת ראש של בני ישראל, שזה נותן אחרי זה את הכוח לפעול תוכן המשך הפרשה. So what's happening? כי טיסה משה רבינו זה אלווייטינג, all the Jewish people, and this gives us the koyach, the power to activate The rest of the parsha, what happens in an Aleph, the Chodesh Anot, the first tablets, in an Abbas, the Avoid of Olam, the our work in the world, and and Ad Apilu b'Mitzav b'Tachton she'en Tachton no matter where there are ads here, even in a state what's dealing with the world, the state of the world as it's at the lowest of the lowest level that there's no lower level than it, ulo and to transform it, ulo alato to elevate it, la dargad el Chodesh Anot to to the level of the second tablets, ima gilu dekanu with the revelation. Of this glory of Hashem coming, this aura of the Kanehod, this revelation of light through the through Moshe Rabbeinu. So we're revealing Moshe Rabbeinu's Kanehod, revelation of light. That every Jewish person can receive this light. Until not only we can receive the light when he's just telling us the words of Hashem, right? When we're sitting in front of the Rebbe receiving, you know, a, a shining countenance. But to receive it when we're dealing with our physical mundane world, everything that we're doing throughout the day, we can still be receiving this shining light, illumination from Moshe Rabbeinu to us. Okay? More than that. Aside from each and every Jewish person receiving this aura, this eminence of these, this radiance from Moshe Rabbeinu, this radiance is activated in each and every Jewish person. So we, each and every one of us have these eminence of this glory, of this rays, of this eminence of Moshe Rabbeinu through us. Mitzat p'chinat Moshe Shebekibo, because we have an aspect of Moshe Rabbeinu within us. So if we're in tune with the Moshe Rabbeinu within us, the Rebbe, we can shine. Admo Zaken Mevel Betanya, the author of Explains in Time. About the saying of the rabbis on the, on the verse. Now, now that you saw, what is Hashem asking from you? All he's asking for you is the year at Hashem to fear Hashem, your God. To have on. So, and they ask, is year as ah, or, you know, this fear or ah, I don't like to use the word fear, is it a small thing? Can for Moshe, Rabbeinu's level, it's small. It's not so hard. When we have this aspect of Moshe Rabbeinu in each and every one of us, then having this reverence, this awe, is, 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 is not so hard. It's, it's easy. It's, 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 a, it's a small thing. It's like not, not, not difficult, put it that way. The fees that צריך להבין מדרך גיסא, so according to this we have to understand. איך מתאים לו מה שיוצא משה, משה שבכל הקהל ישנו אינם בזוטרתה? How could it be that by us it should be so small or so easy or so simple? יש לו מה סודר וזה גמי חידש. How is it simple? שבכל, small meaning it's not, it's not complicated, not difficult. שבמשה גופה ישנן כמה וכמה דרגות. There's different levels of משה רבינו. There's the foot or the, the leg of Moshe. There's the body of Moshe. And then there's the head until the crown of Moshe. So when it comes to the level, the lower level of the feet or the legs, this is the lower level, which represents a lower level of Yira, of awesomeness. That is connected to every Jewish person. It's a smaller thing, it's, it's, it's easier. But then, uh, okay, the, like, so then there's other higher levels of Moshe, which uh, up until the level of at the head and the crown, which is above the head, which is This crown above the head is this level of this emanation of the lights through Moshe Rabbeinu, this aura, this shining countenance. This is the level of it says of Keser, the Keser, the crown of Malchus of kingship, like we know. And then there's footnotes, which I'm not going to read. 
Then, well, this, the Muvan Gambino Gelek, Kvant Moshe, Shabuchol, Echad, Vesa. So, so too, there's a motion in each and every one of us. Shemitzad, the Yudid, Kulol, Betochot, Kolo, Dagot. We really, as a Jew, in our essence, we have all these levels. From the level of Zuta, the low level, which we said is the lower level of reverence, and to the level of Benoni, which is higher. And uh, even we all have the Kesa, the crown, which is this emanation of this light from us to the Moshe Rabbeinu within us. What's the newness? What's this? What, what's new over here? Shinana So again, this is the Abbas Okay, nobody ever said this throughout any generation, no tzaddik, no rebbe. The Abbas is that every Jew has this keser, this true crown, which this level of keser does not exist in the unholy side. It's not, it's beyond what the, uh, it's not count. You know, zelo matzeh. It's not countered in the unholy side. The unholy side can't take over this. Basically, it can't reach this level. It can't harm this level. So we all have this level of keser, which um, uh, because we're bnei melachim, we're children of kings. And the Rebbe says more than that, we're even called king. We're kings ourselves. The Rebbe spoke about this before. Here he's just bringing parentheses. But we all have this, what does it mean we're kings? We have this crown. That every time and every situation, time and place, again, the Rebbe is connecting it. Every time and every place, even even in exile, we have the crown. He has this revelation of the crown, the of Malchus, of Karnei, of, of the radiance, this glory, this eminence from this level of crown. Every Jew, okay, we all have it. And it can't be harmed by the other side because it's beyond what the other side has. What is this in our powers of our soul? This crown is the, this, the power of will. Until the level of of being willing to give over ourselves to Hashem completely, even Mr. Snefesh, meaning to, to give over our life for Hashem. Our desire for Hashem that a Jew has is in its full strength at all times. It's, he didn't say full strength, is in with strength at all times. Therefore, each one of us has always, at all times, all places, the power to stand and withstand and stand strong in Golos, in exile. Because even if our desire for holy things, Paramitzvah, is hidden, even then, even when it's not revealed, our true will is to serve Hashem, to fulfill Hashem's will. Let me know from the Raman. He, 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 he states this and if you look at the footnotes. He says, 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 he it's even now when we have in the depths of Golas, when we have the whole strength of, we have in full strength, we have the revelations of the Kesar, of the crown, and of this radiance, this emanations from the crown, in, and the Jewish people. This shining of the crown, though, is found more prevalent in the Tamidei Chachamim, the people who are actually learning Torah, um, and those who are your shoftecha v'yotzecha, those your um, the the teachers and the guides and the judges, those who are actually helping people um, shine their own light, being giving advice, b'chol um, dovado, in every generation, ad v'do until our generation too, hechel mikvod kedushat mulichem mivos, starting from the previous rebbe, k'achana le'ashiva shoftecha k'vishana v'yotzecha k'vitchila he was the, the true shepherd of the generation, true teacher of the generation. And it's a preparation for Hashem returning the shoftim 
like they were before, and the advice is like they were before. This is all the Rebbe's reminding us, Pasha Shotim that we learned. At the head is the King Mashiach. Uh, we elevate the, the Karen. Karen means also the, the radiance of the, the ray of Mashiach. He will return the, the kingship of the house of David to its place. To the first leadership rulership, he builds the Mason Mekdash, he returns the Jewish people. Um, and, and all the laws come back in his lifetime, like they were before, we bring the Korbanos, etc. This is from Rambam, the laws of kings. That's his base. And you begin all, I'm going to just finish so that people who want to leave can leave. Just a couple more lines. Yeah, should be Hashem's will. Preparation for the second other. We're putting Geula close to Geula. Geula's Purim, the Geula's Pesach. So from the the Geula Purim, go to the Geula Pesach. Which is the month of Geula, Nisan. You Chodesh Adar B'Sheni B'Chodesh Nisan, Chodesh Geula. Often the Mismach Geula and Geula, they should be this the, the second other and the month of uh, Nisan should be months of Geula. Especially if we do our part, which the rabbis say when other comes in, we, we have to increase in joy. So to, the Rebbe is saying, especially now that we're already well into the, the, the month of Adar, first Adar, we already had the small poem, we already had the Shushan poem, Katan, and we were, these were all preparations for getting to the to the the second uh, poem and the second Shushan poem. And we've increased in our levels. We've celebrated everything to now with joy and we've increased our levels of joy and we're increasing this light and joy from day to day in a way of every day we have to be more happy, right? Malin B'Kodesh, we ascend in holiness. Shaz Gadol Yeh Purim Gadol, V'Shoshan Purim Gadol, Yeh Gadol Ojetel. This will make the, the, the Purim that we're coming to even greater and greater. L'Malam Gadol, L'Malam Gadol, greater than greater. V'Alidei Simcha Purim Gadol, through our joy, we break all boundaries. Ad Lika Shem Me'Arega Chon Da'Galut, Ha'Arega Shem Da'Galut, until we have the last moment of Galus becomes the first moment of Geula, but Od Vuka, Pek of Mian Mimash, immediately Mamish. Okay. Okay. So those are one, two. Amen. I mean, we can leave, but if anybody wants to ask, say, whew, this was a lot. I wanted to finish it before Shabbos because this is so essential. Okay. Anybody wants to say something? If somebody wants to introduce yourself, you could. Um, yes. Now's your chance. <laughs> I, I want to say, it's, uh, I wanted to say, like, at the moment of the break, of the moment that he dropped, Moses dropped the first tablets and broke them. Mm -hmm. the, the, the tshuva was instantaneous. Like, it was like we all did tshuva in that one split second because it was so intensely dramatic and, and well and but just like we did shuva then and like now we're, we're we're in the we since then we were been doing our tikkun we can we can in an instant if we open up our eyes and recognize and and like live as we're you know we could bring geula in exactly the same way yeah in an instant in an instant, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, for sure. In an instant, we can make a total transformation of anything dark or concealed or hard into something good. Welcome to Chava and Golden on Facebook. No, I really literally end, we could end it. And we could do, we can do it in our lifetimes. Like we can, yeah, we can, 
it, it's up to us. Like it's up to us. It's all up yeah. to us. Well, I like things. the idea of one instant, like one instant, like the Rebbe that the story that is that connects with that is when they were, you know, when the Rebbe before he was Rebbe, mm -hmm. and he heard some Bachram speaking about how the Gula is going to come. Is it going to be a long process? Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the Rebbe walked up and opened a door and he said, it's going to be like this. Yeah. So I think your idea of one instant is very true. Like, Not just my like idea. that. What one, idea. Oh, you mean Tava's idea? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. One instant like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. That's what I was well, the last moment of ghost becomes the first moment of yeah. ghost. This, uh, yeah. The transformation is. It's so exciting. Yes. Yes. But I don't. I love this Beautiful. how we can all shine. And the the what I got from this year of learning it beyond last year was that that we can have this high revelation. The whole point is this stage of Gimel, which we're enacting now and bringing about now, is that we can have Hashem's the highest revelations while we're dealing with the most mundane, while we're dealing with physical things, and that's the goal to be and connected on the highest, highest level above, above, when we're specifically when we're in this physical world dealing with all the cover-ups of the world. And that's specifically what Hashem wants, and we, that we can do it in our generation. In Moshe's time, it says, the Rebbe is saying, they couldn't handle these great revelations while they were dealing with them in the day. And that's why he, they had to put a guard over them. They, could, they were on this high, high, high level, and they couldn't deal with such high levels when they were dealing with physical things in the world and mundane things. But what they're ever saying to us, we're we're already after all the years of goals of fixing the world and elevating the world and, and clarifying and making it holy and making it, you know, bringing Hashem Kedusha into the world, into this physical world. We can deal with the world and be connected to the highest level and reveal Hashem in what we're doing. That kind of makes sense with the miraglim that that was their big fear. Yes, that was their fear. we can we can handle holiness. Yes, but once we go into the world, how will we handle that? Exactly. That was their major exactly. fear. But here we're at the place that we can do right. But fear it's a fear that people have before they get married. How are they going to handle right. it? How before they go out and shlichas, or if they are in the yeshiva and then they have to start working? Yes, and and it's also could be the fear every day. If I wake up in the morning, how am I going to handle the day? <laughs> How am I going to stay connected? How am I going to deal with these things I don't want to have to deal with and be on the, in a good mood and be happy and increase in happiness? But, <laughs> so, but the only way to do it is to, is to study Torah. That's what you said. Yeah, you said yeah. the tzaddikim, yeah, the, the teachers, the learners, yeah. right? Yeah. And the ones and the ones that elevate, bring light to everyone, you know, to bring that learning to everyone else. So the yeah. only way to be able to do it is the connection yeah. of constantly learning torah yes and and and, and applying it and and doing yeah. the mitzvah yeah and Torah on the inner level of, of chassidus of understanding its meaning deeper meaning you know, as it's connected to our neshama and to hashem not just the revealed parts of torah that i was saying the inner parts of torah that reveals our inner connection to hashem well i mean if you well how do you get to the inner parts of torah if, if you don't study torah like the yeah, Torah that's, and it's, that's what we're doing here now. We're studying. The, yeah, hundred and ten percent. But I mean, it's studying it that, I mean, it reveals. It, I don't know. Like Hasidus came from the Torah. Yeah, it's the, it's it's studying Torah, but not just Torah as it is on the surface. We're studying it with the inner meaning. Well, I mean, you cannot help but get inner meaning when you keep studying Torah. There's no way you could avoid it. That's the whole beauty of studying Torah. Like if you read the words of Torah over and over again with an effort to understand Hashem and what Hashem is telling us, there is that's how Hasidus bloomed. It's from the the intensity of that of that study that it became, you know, yeah, thank thank thankfully we have teachers to guide us. Yes, that's the we don't have to start from scratch. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the, the teachers need to be learning and teaching Hasidus. That's what the Rebbe is saying, to really reveal the inner dimension of our soul, this level of, of crown, of the shining. It's it's connected to the inner dimensions. That's well, Hasidus, that, that, Hasidus, is, Hasidus is the insight of studying Torah. Yes, it's the hidden, the inner meanings, which is brought through 
from the Baal Shem, from the Arizal and the Shimon Bar Yochai through the uh, Baal Shem Tov and through the the Rebbe's afterwards. It's the, well, it's, these are all the all the all the all these all these all these sages and 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 sadiks were created by God. Like correct. everything that they have, all the elements. Everything that they display, all that th everything that they use to understand, is all revealed to them through God. Just like from the yeah, like the you know, obviously God revealed to the prophets. But I see that's another. So so what you're saying is because we're not at that level, we have to do a different type of work. Is that the other part of it? Because we're not in other level. words, like God before the breaking of the tablets. I don't know, like you were trying to do you I would I would I don't know that I fully understood this difference between then and now in terms of like now we have to do a different level of work or we're lower we're lower so okay. we can Okay, so this is bring, an important point. Yeah. This, okay, what I understand is that and there mentions it a few times but briefly, the 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 first tablets were created by Hashem, revealed by Hashem, written by Hashem. It wasn't even something physical. It was all a high level of revelation, very, very high level. And the Jewish people received that level to a certain degree and were able to tolerate it, uh, speaking to Hashem face to Hashem. But this revelation was from Hashem, from above. So we couldn't actually we couldn't actually hear all the Ten Commandments uh, delineated. We asked Moshe Rabbeinu to kind of interpret it because it was such a high revelation of godliness. It was so intense. It was very hard to remain within a body and um, and and accept it, right? So that says the Neshama's left, right? Neshama to help us revive us. And then uh -huh. they, they asked Moshe Rabbeinu to actually translate it. Okay, because it was such an intense revelation. So this intense revelation of the first Luchos was very high. And to be able to have such a revelation and... And while you're dealing with the body and physical was was uh, was was difficult, and even this ray of Moshe Rabbeinu that was came after the second luchos was so intense that they could tolerate it, but they couldn't tolerate it while they were doing dealing with physical things, with worldly things, you know, day to day processes. So so what happened though with the second luchos? The second luchos came after the Jewish people did tshuva and and initiated from below to want Hashem to come and reveal within us as we are here, human beings with our faults, with our downfalls, with our desires, with everything. And it comes from toil and work within this world of dealing with physical things. So they were saying that brought us to higher connection to Hashem and the whole purpose of the descent and through the descent, it's not just the purpose of the descent, through descent, that's the only way to really come to this close connection to Hashem of the level of three, of, of, of the, because it was initiated by us, and it's real within us, within our body, within our psyche, within our heart, within our soul. It's meaningful. It's relevant. It's right, right. It came from our initiation. It's not just. It's understood within us on many levels. We're taking Torah into us. We're not only we're taking Torah into us. We're um, un interpreting and explaining and initiating insights into Torah. That's all the part of the process of this bringing Torah from within us, from below to above. We're initiating a connection. We're initiating understanding. We're initiating relevance. We're making it part of a parcel of us as we are within this world, okay? So that, that's a process of tshuva. That's a process of bringing the second tablets and create the second tablets were made by from stone, from within this world, through Moshe Rabbeinu. That all symbolizes our initiation and our work. This is what brings the highest revelations of Gula, where Hashem will be revealed completely on the high, highest of the highest levels, but within us, within a body, and within a physical world. And, the, and even the physicality of the world will feel Hashem. Our bodies, our flesh will feel and experience Hashem. The people of the world will uh, eventually uh, recognize Hashem, right? There's stages, but the, it's all going to happen until Hashem will be fully revealed in the world. Did you understand? The difference between yeah yeah and so we have to we have to talk about we have to you were saying or the teaching was saying we have to acknowledge him all day and we have to speak about him yes. not just among yes. ourselves but in everything we do in the culture in the world that we live in yes that's what the rabbi said yes. yeah
Yes. Okay. See yes, Hashem, thank you. See Hashem creating the world at every moment. Okay. You can pile that in. That's but exactly. right, but we have to be active about it. We can't just be internally passive about yes, it. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. It's not and, just and, for us. And our whole realization that the whole world was created for us and for Torah, not the other way around. Not that we have to adapt ourselves and Torah to the world. We have to we have to go according to the Rebbe said we have to be within the world in an acceptable way, but knowing that the whole world and creation was for Torah. So that therefore the world doesn't stop things from Torah happening, okay? And everything is created in such a way that we should be able to keep Torah 100%. Not that and we're, we're, really true, we're really true conduits yes. from, we're really true conduits and his desire is for us to express holiness and, and, and express like almost, yeah, godliness. Or like, godliness. yeah, holiness and, and godliness. Do that, when we do that, in everything trying, we do, we sing, we dance, do. yeah. Yes. We, we the way that, we we're transforming darkness into light. We're revealing Hashem in the world and the darkness of the world. That's and perfect. so and we have complete, like, uh, what's the word? Um, I don't know if the word is dominion. Like, yeah, it's over the earth because He told us, "Be fruitful and multiply and tame, tame the, tame the earth." What did He say? Tame the I don't know. Tame some, tame this world. Like, act on the world. But like that's and we're yeah. and therefore. Oh. Keep yeah, speaking. and therefore, yeah, and that, yeah. and that, when we do that, everything will fall into line. But if we have fear, if we have doubt, if we separate ourselves, if we separate things, we compartmentalize things, then it's not going to work. Like that's not right. how it works. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Bring a shem wow. in the darkness <laughs> within ourselves, starting with Modani in the morning, and acknowledging a shem throughout the day while we're in, in the mundane world and and doing a cheshbon nefesh, the counting at the end of the day. So believe me, I want to take from this talk to, to to do more, a better job, a little bit more in my cheshbon nefesh at the end of the day, the counting at the end of the day, because it's that end of the day is really where it's all culminating and all coming to fulfillment. And uh, that's where we, we, right? We think and acknowledge Hashem that's a new thing for me. I didn't notice before that there's just like we have acknowledgement when in the morning. They were saying we need to have that acknowledgement. Thanking Hashem, acknowledging Hashem at the end of the day too. So to pay more attention. I'm a morning person. It's easier for me to do it in the morning, but at night, oh, I need to. I need to put more effort and concentration and give it more more importance in my day. So that's. Okay. I, I, I think also, but with Simcha, like the Rebbe is yeah. like really emphasizing, especially the double Simcha, but that I think nice, yeah. I, I got like, I got like a, a deeper understanding, I think this time of the idea of the failure, the, the not the failure, the, the, the falling, the falling is so much part of that process. So all of our fallings, aren't in like guilt and feeling bad and going into down places, but the falling was actually part of that process to get closer to Hashem. Like that, you know, that was in the parish it's saying you had to have the, 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 the beginning, the middle and the end. The middle is significant. This is where we're at. And we should say like, just learn and grow from everything, but not to feel bad or guilty but instead to feel this is another catalyst for me to uplift like it's part of the process all of face gimel you can't you can't lose the base this is part of the process the up and down is all part of our process mm -hmm. and getting closer to the gaula but you know what we, well i don't know what other people tend to do but what i would feel was the guilt and the blame and the messing and and that goes into negative instead of like Oh, this was totally part of the process. Now, what am I going to learn from it? What am I going to grow from it? How can I, you know, exactly. what am I taking from it? Right. Yeah. I hear. I hear it exactly. We, we spoke about this more either yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday. Not to be ashamed of the process. Not to feel guilty. Not to feel bad. Because then we're going to ignore. That's why Yitzhar trying to to separate us from this part B base. And we can't do that. We want to be able to be fully in that process and 
present and acknowledging and knowing it and realizing if we if we're ignoring it or denying it, that's called denial. We're not being we can't transform it. Right? If we're avoiding it and saying, oh, this is too dark and too hard and too harsh for me. And I don't want to admit that I'm in this state of not seeing and concealment and dissent. If we're not going to acknowledge that, yeah, we can't elevate it, we can't transform it. We have to admit and be okay with the fact that we're in base, yes, when we're in the down. Then, then and we and acknowledge it as the Rebbe holds it to be acknowledged as part of the process, not something to be ashamed or embarrassed by. Okay, so that's I'm preaching. It's hard, you know. We we want to always be, you know, disconnected. But that, no, but that awareness yeah. is making that awareness is very important. It's yes. it's it's not that it's not that it's easy, but it's an awareness that you you expose the lies more by having the awareness because yeah. you know where is this? What's the solution? The solution is knowing is this coming from a place of kedusha or a place of klipa? So the awareness of knowing base is, is crucial in our process to geula. Yes, and exactly. so if we if we're aware of it, we're not going to like Avoid. run away as much. You know, it's an right. awareness. Awareness it's really awareness. helps. It awareness, helps. awareness that we're in that process in that journey of transforming dark to light and right looking at that darkness and seeing it within us also. Yeah, whatever darkness there is still there. Whatever is, um, there was somebody reminding me of a story of the Rebbe that, you know, Mir Swordlow tells the story, it's become famous, I think, that they were once in an airport um, after um, a convention and they were trying to get back to Crown Heights and they, the, something with flights didn't work out. And so they wrote, called the Rebbe's office and they said, we're stuck in the airport. And the Rebbe's answer was, a Jew is never stuck. There's something you need to fulfill there and do there. I think it was, they mentioned maybe Shabbos candles or something, or I don't know if he gave us specifics, but the woman went out and started doing the selling Shabbos candles in the airport. And it turns out that somebody's life was changed, at least one that they know of, and um, that's her famous story. I just gave it in two, two, two sentences. But the point is, is that they were in a- Well, that's a perfect example. Yes. That's a good example of how, you know, we, we're getting down over whatever, oh, you yeah. know, even if you missed, let's say you missed a flight or you missed yeah. flight and you start beating yourself up. No, this is part of your process. And you just... right. So instead of blaming ourselves, oh, I should have, could have, would have. Why right. I'm so stupid. I didn't, you know, plan. Right. 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 No. Why did Hashem do this to me? Da, 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 you know. <laughs> it's yeah. like, how can yeah. you transform wherever you are into? Where you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anywhere you are, but also within within yourself, wherever you are at this moment in your journey. Oh, you to, yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's all mostly right. inside yourself. If, I'm, if yeah. I'm having anger, it's where I am within my journey that I just need to acknowledge. Okay, I'm hurt. I'm angry. I'm I'm alone. I'm whatever it is. I'm 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 feeling sad. Whatever it is, yeah, acknowledge it. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Acknowledge it and elevate it. Well, thank you very much. It was beautiful. Thank as you as always. For joining and to have a good Shabbos. Kitisa will be on the next level. Michal Chayel, and and I want. Yeah, it, it brought out it brought out more excitement in it. Like I would come to this parsha, I used to feel like, oh, the sin. Oh man, like we have to do that again. But now it's like more excitement. No, this is the yes. process. It's okay. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it's it. okay. We're doing what the process. We're doing the journey. Um, thank you so the, much yes part of the journey i want to hear on monday what you did to make yourself happy not just spiritually spiritually we all know you're doing oh it. now you're giving us homework too yes. okay homework, <laughs> this is such hard homework we have to have we have to be the simcha make ourselves happy yes do you hear said, do we hear ourselves that's what said to do. Um, I, I, my husband, I no, it's not that. that we have to do it, it's that we have to report it. Like, that's the whole well. Work. If you're going to report it, you better be doing it. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I did something last night that um, I um, convinced my husband to take me on a date. <laughs> last night. Uh, I love that. That's yeah, nice. yeah, it's good for so, you. Yeah, good for so, you. and I told him it's odd that we have to be happy to do something. I said, Did you do something today happy that was more than yesterday? If not, we we need to go out. So <laughs> wonderful. Well, that have might be that now you're talking about good homework. Okay, we'll try that. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So if your husband can't go out, go out with a girlfriend, whatever it is, go out with yourself. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just something that you haven't taken care of yourself. I've been doing the same and uh, I missed it. If somebody can take yeah. a picture, maybe. A, are we doing, are do we doing our victory simcha dance? That, yeah, that so, would help. And, and if I can ask somebody, if somebody could take a picture or photo of the chat, I don't know, or can tell me how I can access the chat because I don't, I can't, I don't notice the chat. As you I'm can't saying. press on chat to see what's going on? Um, now I could, but I'm just saying like, I usually don't necessarily always see all the chats. I don't, I'm not able to do so much at once. If somebody would take a picture or something or somehow download it, I don't know. If I could do it. Can you hear me? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Thank I you. just I'm did sorry. it. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't respond to everybody's chat, but maybe I'll look it over later. That would be helpful. Thank you so much, Chava. Thank you sure. all. We're going to do the, I'm going to turn off the recording so we can do our victory dance. Yeah, our victory dance. Simcha. We're going to start Simcha right now.